This episode of Nicknames Movies is brought to you by Zach's beautiful singing voice. Yeah, go out on a high note for you if you want. All right, yeah, go ahead. I think you shattered everyone's china. Or well, eardrums. Crystal. Or <laughs> eardrums, yeah. Those, those poor eardrums. They, now they can't even listen. Yeah, now they're, they have to be in drumline with Nick Cannon. Hello everyone and welcome back to Nicknames Movies, episode number 19 for the week of September 7th, 2019. Each and every week we bring you all the cinema love and keep you informed about what's going on in Hollywood. I'm your host, Nick Naming Movies, and alongside me is my co-host, Zach. How's it going? Zach. I'm good, Nick. How are you? Uh, I'm, I'm different every week, whereas you are just good. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm, what can I say? I'm steady. Yeah. Just going steady. Yeah. I did have a shot of espresso today before I came Oh, out okay. Yeah. I took Benadryl this morning. Oh. That's more for on, allergies. We're on different levels. We though. are. We are. We are. <laughs> That's okay. But, you know, because just because we're on different levels doesn't mean we can't make a good podcast. Yeah. yeah. Because this is Nicknames Movies, the podcast where we talk about what we've been watching and give you our thoughts. Want to, give, want to be a part of the cast? You can head on over to patreon.com slash nicknames movies where you can donate as low as $1. And get the episodes a day early. I forgot that was <laughs> the, the rest of the sentence there. If you don't want to donate, no big deal. Remember, every episode will be live every Sunday on YouTube or your podcast service of choice. Remember, you can also head on over to tpublic.com slash users slash nicknames movies to find our merch and help represent your favorite new podcast. I am wearing one of our shirts. I'm glad you finished that because I thought you were going to go and just, a different way. Yeah. And talk about something you're wearing underneath your pants or i mean i'm wearing i'm wearing our uh nicknames movies boxers right now nice. uh pretty tight in the groinal Put area our faces on your crotch yeah. yeah well it's just your face oh it's just my face yeah in the oh, crotch okay. area yeah that makes sense yeah i need to have you close <laughs> <laughs> uh but let's just dive into the previews I, I'll, I'll post the picture in the video podcast but uh it's it's our anime it's Nicknames movies, the anime. It's from uh, the Far East. Yes. Uh, it's beautiful. The eyes line up with the, the nipples. They do. Yeah, a little you bit. You can't say yeah, they don't, because no, they do. But they do. But then you can say, like, my eyes are down here. There you go. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Especially if they can't read Japanese, and it just says, like, you know, let's get it on. But it just says nicknames movies. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, mystery is the slice of life. It is. It is. And it's a delicious, delicious slice. Yeah. Like the good cheese pizza. pizza. Oh. I'm I'm I want dessert. What you, Zach, what have you been watching? Well, um I haven't picked up anything particularly new this week, so uh I'm just gonna keep How dare you I'm gonna keep it brief and just say I watched more Terrace House. Alright. Um, and I also, Casey and I started watching, uh, a baking show on Netflix. Is it the great British? Yeah, it's the show? British one. <laughs> the British baking <laughs> show, that one. The, 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 yeah. Oh, whatever. I got those people on there. Yeah. Do you like cooking? Is that? No, I fucking hate cooking. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. Casey likes to cook. Oh, yeah. And bake. But yeah, yeah. I don't. I, I love it with a great burning passion. Well, it's it's good that you have a significant other that loves doing it. It's so, true, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did luck out in that regard. I have to cook everything myself because I'm alone. Well, and like, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. let's just move on. Let's move on. Well, I, 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 I don't know my life is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, tell you what, you can come over and I'll cook for you, but it's basically I can do. It's healthy. Very shit, isn't it? very minimal things with chicken. There you go. Um, grilled cheese? Yeah, grilled cheese I can Ramen. do. I don't want to do grilled cheese because that takes more work, I feel like. And I'm lactose intolerant, yeah, so we're on yeah. the same page. Um, I, mac and cheese, even though that's the same Yeah, problem. thanks. Thanks for <laughs> moving on to a different food Hot group. dogs. I can make you hot dogs. That's perfect. I can put chicken nuggets in the oven. I do that already. Yeah. I well, have some. You know, I was if gonna you cook. ever want to put your feet up and, you know, not do it for that's 30 minutes. That's true. For that's very minutes. true. It's true. When am I going over? When am I going over to your place? I don't know. Whenever. Cool. 
<laughs> I'm inviting myself over. Right. Yeah, just show up and be like, like Casey. No, I'm here for my chicken nuggets. And I'm like, are they dinosaur okay. shaped? They are. Cause Fuck yes. My wife won't let me get the normal ones. Yeah. <laughs> well, they taste better. I actually, I was talking to. Um, they do taste different. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're talking about the the brand the Tyson ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're just I don't know what they're bad or different or something. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think they have those regulations in place for children. Oh yeah, always, you know what? That makes sense. There's only so much shit you can put in food like, for like children. A, yeah, <laughs> not the processed <laughs> over and like, over. Ah, they're so. they're over fifteen. Let it with fat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This has been nicknames chicken nuggets. <laughs> nicknames nuggets. Nick. Oh yes. Uh, side side show. There you go. There how you how go. many? That's a, that has a a shelf life though. There's not many episodes we can do with that. No, but you, we can visit all the different places that do ch- chicken nuggets. I don't want to visit that. You don't want to do that? Ignorance is bliss. I don't want to see how chicken's made. Well, no, we don't have to see how it's made. We just have to taste them to try them out. Yeah, but you're talking about visiting the factories. No, not the factories. I'm talking about the different restaurants, like McDonald's, you do Wendy's. Oh, I, it's very kind of you to call McDonald's and Wendy's a restaurant. Restaurant, <laughs> fast food joint. I don't know. What's the definition of restaurant? I see. We're on different levels. I thought you were saying we should uh, visit their point of origin. No, 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 (laughs) no. I just, ignorance is bliss, like you said. (laughs) I just, I'm good. Uh, What else have you been watching? Just those? Uh, Pretty much that. Yeah. 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 Um, Well, if it makes you feel any better, I haven't been watching anything different either. Yeah. Uh, I have, uh, oh, well, no, there is a new show, uh, although I started watching it literally right after we finished recording. Yeah. Uh, and we'll probably get into it because you got excited there for a second. Well, I think I think now that I'm thinking about it, I know what you're talking about. Did you finish the show? Yes. Okay. Did you? I haven't finished it. Okay. If we're talking about the same thing, All right, we're well, doing circles around it. If, if we're not, then it's going to be very awkward it for will the listeners. Be. Um, but I've been watching a lot of Friends. Uh, I I really hope Ross and Rachel end up together. I have no idea. Uh, I feel really sorry for Emily, although she's a little bit you know no, controlling. Nobody tell him. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I, for the longest time, I thought, you know, Emily is, is great. She's a great uh, girlfriend, and I'm glad that they're getting married. And then Ross ended up fucking it Look, up and yeah, saying the wrong name. But it, like, there's only so much you could expect someone to take, right? Well, Ross is an idiot. In fact, I'm pretty sure he's a homicidal murderer. Uh, and no homicidal. One's, homicidal. Yeah, what did yeah. I say? No, that, no, you you said that. I was just repeating it. Oh, okay. Yes. For, for, I was, like, reaffirming. Like, yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, have you ever seen like those YouTube videos where they they take yeah, clips they of do friends, the, uh, like different soundtrack over it? And yeah, stuff like yeah, that? yeah. And it's just really creepy, <laughs> yeah. and you're like, oh yeah, yeah. Now that I think about it, <laughs> not not to mention the fact that a lot of what happens and what they say in Friends is like not PC anymore. Oh no, no, it is aged. Like how he doesn't he takes Ben's uh, Barbie doll the Barbie away. Barbie doll, yeah, and yeah. wants to replace it with a GI Joe or a football yeah. or whatever. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, oh, dude, just let him play with the doll. Yeah, and everyone else is like, just let him play with the doll. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just Ross. Or how uh, Chandler can't be effeminate at all in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> to be fair, it's because of his whole dad situation, and so he well, wants that's to rebel why against he, that. I feel that like that's why he feels weird about it, but nobody else will like say yeah. you're being weird. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Well, like, just let him... Like, there's no affection with the guys, yeah. really. Like, Joey and him hug for, like, a couple times in you the show. Chandler and Joey are going to end up together? Oh, man, that'd be perfect. That would they be deserve perfect. each other. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, they... Man, I can't... I, I have to actually wait until you finish the damn show to talk about this. This is so frustrating. I have seen... Look, I, <laughs> I have seen the series. It was just when I was very young, and uh, I don't remember much of it. I was more of a home improvement... Seinfeld. Oh, okay. I, I was, you know, parents. Tim, Tim the Toolman Taylor, uh, father, <laughs> father of Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Not actual. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, he is. But I've been watching a lot of that, uh, just because it's it's easy. You know, yeah, it's, it's it comfortable. Yeah. It's uh, delicious. I don't know what I'm describing. Sure, sure, yeah. Um, it's like empty carbs. And then I've been watching Terrace Houses long. Uh, along with you, but at a much slower pace. Yes, you uh, you uh, texted Casey earlier in the week, uh, yeah. like immediately after the last podcast, and uh, I believe you said something along the, the lines of, I, I hope your husband's happy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to be clear, it's uh, Terrace House. If you didn't listen to last week's episode, it's like a reality show with six yeah, uh, in Japan. people. Yeah. yeah, in Japan. Uh, in... Well, the series that I'm watching, I don't know if you've moved on to a new series. No, no, we're still 
we're in the second part of the first series. Okay, so yeah, yeah it's boys and girls in the city. Yeah. yeah. But the, don't be confused by the title. It's actually adults. Yeah. Like three men, three <laughs> yeah. women I living in a house. I think the youngest... Well... I think it was like 21. Well, where you are, I believe the youngest is 21. Yeah. They do have someone younger come in later on. I don't like how they'll... Like, they haven't replaced anybody yet, but they've replaced... They replace people. Well, or they do don't, they just move on? They don't kick people out. Yeah. The people in there are just like, it's time for me to go. That's just sad. It, it depends. Yeah. But I mean, if you're watching this person and they're like, woof, they're having a real hard go of it. Yeah. Like, yeah. they, fuck, this is another one where I can't really talk about it since you're watching it now. I'll Because I don't want to spoil it for you. Yeah. But there are instances where, like, someone will attempt to go out with someone. Yeah. And they just, like, they'll connect, but the the other person they're, they're trying to go out with isn't on the same level as them romantically. Yeah. So they end up pursuing someone else, and then... Like how life works. Yeah, yeah. And then, then that person leaves, and they replace them with a person that's the same gender or identifies as the same gender gender there you go um so the that person is like oh well here's my second chance and then they go and ask this new person out and they're like yeah i'm good if everyone goes (laughs) i don't really want to go anywhere with just you oh i can't wait to get to that point yeah Uh, but uh it's it's not like most reality shows in America where like they tense up the drama and they bring it up and everybody's just overly dramatic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's more about like uh, just people living in this house and then they talk and talk about life and. Yeah, we were saying before we started. Calm. Yeah, uh, before we started recording, we were saying that um, it's unlike reality shows that we're used to in the yeah. west where people are looking for drama to start and especially producers are looking for drama to start yeah there's even a whole like drama series based around uh, that. yeah yeah where you what was what it called uh younger is that it um casey watches it uh, i think it's younger where it's like they're doing a reality tv yeah. show and there's like stuff behind it i think it's younger Fuck. okay I don't, wanna, sure, I don't want to. I don't want to look into it. It seems hard to look up. Um, but in Terrace House, it's all like miscommunication stuff. So yeah. they actually talk about what's happening, and they're like, "Okay, well, maybe we can just move past that." <laughs> but I, I've been I've been watching that, and if you want to get uh, more details about the show, uh, listen to last week's episode, or episode. tweet or tweet at me because I'll talk about it. Now. Oh yeah, he's <laughs> he's obsessed with the show. Tweet at Full Metal underscore Z. Yeah, yeah. Um, we I'm pretty sure Casey and I watched like 15 episodes alone after last week's Jeez. podcast. That's Just a binge that Saturday. Yeah. yeah. Well, I did. I, I could tell you a show that I did binge uh, that I started watching immediately after last week's episode. Mm. Because it premiered that same day. It was, was Carnival what, Row. Yeah. Was this what you were talking about earlier? That yes. you finished? Yeah. Yes. That's what I was talking about. Okay. Carnival Row. So did you finish it? I didn't. I got to epi- I got through episode two. Okay. So uh, Out I'm, of eight I'm, episodes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and this is an Amazon Prime original show starring Orlando Bloom and of Cara Lord of the Rings. D'Evangeline? No. Delavine. <laughs> Delavine. Yes. Uh, from Suicide Squad. Ugh. Listen, that's the only movie that comes to mind when I think of her, unfortunately. Yeah. I know she's been in other stuff. But <laughs> Well, now you can say, Kara, uh, how do you say it? Delvine. Del- Is Delavine. that really how you say it? Yeah, D-E-L-I-V-I-G-N-E, I think. Delavine. Kara Delavine. Yeah. I've always said Devange. Uh, pr- I mean, sure. Whatever. Kara Devange. Devil. I, I mispronounce your last Kara. name all the time. Kara. Smithy? <laughs> Smythe. Smythe? <laughs> uh, you can say Kara from Carnival Row. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I So, just a uh, quick uh, you know, review. Um, I really enjoyed it. I'm a big sucker for, like, kind of, not alternate reality. Uh, different takes historical on... Historical fiction. Yeah, almost. historical fiction, kind of. Uh, it's set in a different universe because there's different countries, continents, and whatever. Yeah. But it's... It's a new spin slash new take on a genre that's been around for a long time, which right. is uh, Victorian steampunk. Ste- I wouldn't kind call it steampunk. Of, it's like the aesthetic is steampunk, but there's not really any steampunk. In it's it. Victorian fiction. Yeah. Um. Yeah. There's there is like 
uh, rifles and mm-hmm. guns and stuff, but nothing automatic at this or point. Barbed wire and trees. But it's <laughs> it's got that, but it's also got high fantasy uh, creatures and characters yeah. like uh, fawn and fairies, fairies or fae. and fae. Yeah. Uh, and Saders. what have you. But the the show is not really about like, oh, we need to go get the magical objects and save the world. I like that accent. Okay. Lucky charms. Oh, thank you. It's my it's my it's my try the try the look of the Irish uh, accent. You know, <laughs> well, we all go back down to the pub and go on down to London. You, you slipping in a little bit. Oh, uh, you fuck you, man. I know what I'm well, doing. You started Irish and then you you went like it's because I was trying. Cockney. It's because yeah. I was trying. Yeah, once you like start thinking about it, it's mm. it's my deep Irish roots. <laughs> yeah. Underneath all this blue yeah. is red. Trust me. Oh, that's what. Well, you see it in the beard. I yeah yeah. You know, it is I there, see it yeah. in your beard. It is. It's there. Yeah. Um. <laughs> we're bearded men, uh, but it's Beard. Beard. Yeah, we're men. <laughs> but uh, the show is not really about uh, the the time period or uh, the fantastical elements of it. It's more about classism, racism, yes, yeah. and uh, it's also a murder mystery. It's got a very Sherlock mm-hmm. Holmes esque uh, film noir type of story to it. Yeah, a detective it's like story, high concept for. By in a low concept guys, right, right. Uh, it's kind of the, it's the gritty streets where Sherlock Holmes never would have walked to be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you kind of get what I'm saying. Like it's a lot of the scenes take place in a whorehouse. Yeah. There's dirty alleyways. There's mm-hmm. you know, there's a war scene at the very beginning. Yeah, Carnival Row is basically like a uh, a poverty area for uh, like for the uh, burg. For, yeah, or like, yeah, I guess that's what... The that name what of the called? city is The Berg. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just meant for, like, fey folk. Yes, and yes. Like, like, the fantastical creatures. Yeah. That's where they're kind of relegated it's the, to. It's, I, I don't want to have to use the word, but it's a ghetto. It's a yeah, yeah. it's a slums area. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's basically where people go if they want to get that kind of stuff uh but there's uh it's orlando bloom is a war veteran who is like uh, an inspector is now an inspector he's basically a detective mm-hmm. trying to solve murders <clears throat> and he basically takes all the cases that none of the other because everyone in this world is racist all yes, right they're yeah. they're basically in 2019 uh basically if you have this mindset uh fuck you uh you're a horrible person but i'll cuss th- on that uh, where the entire the entire world, the entire community is basically racist. They're not at that point in, I guess, this world's history where everyone is kind of inclusive when it mm-hmm. comes to different races. Basically, the entire police force is like, if you're fairy, if you're fawn, if you're basically anything other than human, you're beneath us. They can't be bothered to solve murders yeah. for fantasy folk. In fact, they incite a lot of the, yeah, the yeah. violence, you know. Or they'll just look the other way. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's... Like, they don't even want to do an autopsy on someone. I, yeah, yeah, which is... Because it's like a waste of resources. I know, them. and again, like, I, we were born in the early 90s. Uh, we didn't go through a lot of our nation's history and a lot of, you know, most world history where that stuff is uh, is still prevalent. I don't know where I'm going with this. Racism uh, is a very serious topic to cover in a fantastical show. And I actually like the way that they covered it. And it seems right. very relevant, yeah. even with all of the fantastical creatures. But uh, um, I liked it. There are, are some slow moments in the show. There's a little bit of bloating. It's... There's a flashback episode, I think is episode three. Oh, good. I have something um, to look forward to. <laughs> but I actually like the flashback episode because okay. they uh, they do more character building with the two main leads, Cara Delvine and Orlando Bloom. Yeah. Uh, and I like the practical effects. I mean, the yeah, makeup yeah. for the fawn, mm-hmm. which people call puck, but I think that's a derogatory. It is a derogatory. Term. Okay. Uh, but the horn makeup that they use is, is amazing. Yeah. It looks like. Yeah. It, they, it's a mix between practical or like the show is a mix between practical effects and CG. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the practical effects look The really budget is good. there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, uh. I mean, as long as they're okay with uh, sitting through like a lot of like just, it's heavy. It's 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 yeah, it's very serious uh, subject matter. Mm-hmm. Plus, you know, uh, because it's on Amazon, you got the you've got some gore in there, you've got some violence, you've got some some nudity. There's some saucy scenes in yeah. there between uh, fantastical creatures and humans. 
I won't say, but um, yeah, I it's it's a mature series. It covers a very serious subject matter, but I like the seri- I like the uh, story overall, and I think the limpest part is probably uh, the the murder mystery aspect oh, to really? it. That's yeah. a bummer. But uh, that's just my opinion because yeah. I feel like the more relevant stuff is more relevant to me. Because I really know? like uh, uh, for context, Casey and I started watching it together. Yeah. And she couldn't get into it because she is not a big fan of like murder mystery type yeah. things. So I'm usually alone when I watch that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was I was looking forward to that, that murder mystery type thing. Because at some point Maybe Cthulhu shows up. Oh, oh <laughs> it's yeah, just yeah. like something coming out of a sewer that looks like it could be an old god. Oh yeah, and that's There's... not like I don't think that's too big of a spoiler because that's episode two, two out of eight. Yeah, and really, it's episode. I think that ends with episode one. But like that, that the sti- the end scene for yes. episode one is yes. what that yes, is. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so. I recommend uh, for you at least uh, talking to you directly, but I feel like you would still enjoy the rest of the show. It's oh, just yeah, when yeah. they try to juggle. Uh, there's quite a few characters. There's a good handful of characters in the show. There are. Yeah. So when they try to uh, bounce from, uh, you know, two characters talking about auctioning off another character, uh, going back to a murder mystery, and then going back to Carol Delvine's character trying to, you know, rob someone. You yeah. know, it's just. I don't want to mention the show that a certain part reminds me of, but it's a high budget fantasy show that ended this year <laughs> that there is a moment when you finish Carnival Row where yeah. you're like, oh, damn it. Are you serious? But, you know, it's season one. It's already been greenly, green lit for mm-hmm. season two. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. excited to see more. Amazon has been kind of on a roll yeah. within the last couple months with their... Uh, new shows marvelous mrs mazel uh yeah that got a new that uh, did that new season drop season three no or is it still out season two out finished uh i don't know if season three is i know up. the boys got renewed for season yep. two already. oh that got huge mm-hmm. yeah huge numbers so why not and then uh fleabag uh which oh, has, yeah. mm-hmm. um but anyway uh, carnival row i recommend it to people who are into the uh it's like a heavy D and D session. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but set in like a Victorian setting. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of grounded storylines to it. So yeah. give it a shot. Yeah, give two, it a couple two episodes. episodes in, and I'm enjoying it. There you so, go. Um, it's hopefully it's not too much of a problem for me as I keep watching. If the uh, shortcomings are present, as you say, but I, I but from what I hear overall, you really enjoy. You enjoyed it. Yeah. Um. But that's that's what I've been watching. Um, do you have anything else? Uh, what are you doing? Um, no, I think that's it for me. All right, let's let's just. I I did watch some stuff for our topic, but oh, okay, yeah. See, I was going to do that, but that I couldn't decide on what to watch. Let's go into our main subject, which is. I mean, is it It Chapter 2 or is it Stephen King? It's kind of a mixture of both. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, so It Chapter 2 came out September 6, 2019, mm-hmm. yesterday. Yep. Uh, technically Thursday, but whatever. Uh, and it's a continuation of It, uh, I guess, Chapter 1, 2017. Yes. And I, it's not a different film. Like, you can't watch Chapter 2 without watching Chapter 1, really, right? I think you feasibly could. But a lot of the context is lost. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it being such a popular book mm. and miniseries and movie already. Um, so we both saw it. Yes. You saw it last night. I saw it this morning. Yes. Uh, so what did you think about it? Um, overall, I enjoyed it. Um, I think the... How did you convince your wife to go see it? Oh, she wanted to see it. Oh, okay. Yeah. She she loved the first one. Yeah. So she has been actually excited to see this. Uh, oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. I uh, she typically is not a big horror movie fan. Yeah. Well, I shouldn't say that cuz she does like horror movies. She just it's they stress her out a lot. Yeah. I, I said could before imagine. that she's a person who really doesn't enjoy conflict in movies. That's just So a horror movie is like she really has the ultimate. to 
Yeah. yeah, she really has to gear herself up to watch it. Yeah. But, you know, like, horror movies are such a, like, a guttural, they provide guttural reactions, you know? And I, I think mm-hmm. most people can't get over, not get over that, but they need that. Yeah. You know, that's what's exciting about a horror movie is that you're being pushed to your limit. Yeah, to to bring out, like, dark fears yeah, yeah. underneath you. Which is why it it is such a successful, uh, I'll say franchise. Yeah, sure. Um, wow. Because they depict a lot of fears that people have in day-to-day life. And I don't know if you saw, but uh, Andy M- Muschietti, is yes. that how you say it? Um, the director for mm-hmm. the two recent It movies uh, has said there's enough... <laughs> there's enough what what are you, what's no. the word like footage not footage i like material material there's okay, enough there material go. with pennywise that they could feasibly do something like a prequel down the line i don't eh. think that's necessary but yeah. i mean hollywood has to make a franchise I, out of everything so i feel like i feel like five hours of it is enough when you well, when you make the most successful R-rated horror movie in the last decade, yeah, then yeah, some but, execs are going to be like, "How can we stretch this even more?" Which is why they've been adapting all of Stephen King's stuff. Yeah, yeah. It was the success of it mm. and the success of some of his other stuff. Maybe not Dark Tower. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll get into this. Uh, after I think we're done with it, but I also watched uh, Pet Cemetery 2019. Oh, okay, I haven't. Um, it's on my queue, and that was also very successful. It had a budget yeah. of uh, like 20 million or something like that, and but it I think made over a hundred. That's that was a lower budget film, right? right? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you can make bank, and horror movies are always successful, anyways, because Blue House. They'll well, people will just go see a horror movie, like even yeah. if it's shitty. Like, my mom will literally watch any horror movie. It doesn't matter how bad reviews are. Like, she'll always watch it. Because she loves horror. Yeah. And, like, production costs are so low on horror movies anyway that as long as you fill a theater the for a off. couple nights. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as long as you fill a theater for a couple nights on release weekend, then you're pretty much guaranteed to make your money back and then some. Very true. Very true. Uh, but going back to It Chapter 2, um, overall, I liked it. I think there are some definite pacing issues. Um, it has I agree. A, it uses has a over reliance on CG. I felt um, when it came to it, or when it came to the, other. There's just monsters, like every yeah, nearly every single monster or thing in this is CG yes. to the point of like there's almost no practical effects in this at all. Yeah, which the, like. The first one wasn't too practical either, but you could it, tell it was it was well it was metered too. You know there was there wasn't a monster in every scene. You know they were kind of using the tension a mm-hmm. lot in some of it and kind of falling back on oh well this is also kind of a coming of age story so we'll focus on that and less of the horror aspect. And I feel like part of how they did this movie is a direct response with the criticism of some well myself included that the first one wasn't exactly scary yeah so but instead of opting for like more tension building and mm-hmm. like uh i actually thought like, the first one was scarier than this one to be honest well it's it's different right because it's the so the, i i feel like the first one is all atmosphere horror almost yeah. whereas this one is like jump scare central the the paul bunyan statue yeah made me, made and, me and, jump for yeah, sure yeah yeah where he uh shows up up to the side but like that whole uh kind of string of scenes there's a point in this movie where they kind of all separate off of course and i, I feel movie. like this is a section of the movie that really we could have kind of shortened a little bit yeah um this movie is three hours long um and i don't think an individual quest for six or seven items yeah uh with each character they did it for the scares yeah yeah that's essentially what these scenes are there for it's it's for the jump scares but if you take that out the movie gets shortened by at least an hour yeah um 
And not to mention they have to include Henry Bowers uh, coming back and including him in the in the movie because well, that doesn't that doesn't bother me because I was part of the original. So. No, no, I know, but they have to. In order for him to be a threat, they needed to separate the characters and use that yeah, as yeah. a reason. So he was another physical threat right. as opposed to the supernatural mm-hmm. that they were dealing with. Yeah. And that's another thing I think, too. Like, Pennywise doesn't do a whole lot of physical threatening in yeah. this movie. He, he Well, he takes different forms. Right, right. When it comes but to... until the very end, they're, like, he's not actively attacking them most of the time. Right. It's more he's of, just like it's in your mind yeah which no that's fair that's like part of pennywise that's part of why he's doing it he's feeding off of their fear but it's kind of like this um tonal difference yeah um where we're supposed to be thinking like oh well this is just in their heads you know yeah. like this is pennywise preying on base fears However, everything that we're seeing is very physical, and they're doing that f- to, like, kind of uh, service the jump scares. Mm-hmm. So, like, there's this disconnect, almost, in how they approach it. And it, it's, it seems counterintuitive to even its plan, because towards the end, he's just like, ah. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and to be fair, that is also part of Pennywise's thing, where... And I don't know, I don't remember them touching this on the, in the first movie, but he gets more sustenance from people he eats, the more scared they are. Yeah. So him actively trying to make them more terrified. I I don't, it's, it, that's, that's a weird, um, like kind of aspect of the character to bring up just because, uh, there is... Like they they don't fail to show that he uh, kills and eats both adults and kids. Right, like right. there are there's a death body count whatever uh, in this film. Uh, but one of the characters I don't want to kind of spoil it, mm. but uh, is shown in the trailer. Um, the, the Winnie the Pooh. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> that moment sh- didn't seem scared when it consumed that person. Do you know what I mean? Uh, which uh, you mean under the bleachers? The bleachers? Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. The other. I mean, the well, other I one. think, and I'm honestly, I'm trying to remember from the from the mini the source material and, and the, the book and the mini series. Yeah. Um. And to be fair, I haven't read all of the the book. It's a big too. book. It's it like is. It's very long. Two thousand pages. Um. So I I'm not gonna like sit there and like make excuses up for the movie for not explaining these things because that's part of being a, an adaptation. Like if you're just going to put stuff in there, but not explain it, yeah. then sorry, that's a shortcoming of your movie. Um, you can't expect people to, you know, research really, you know, the general audience anyway. 1,138 pages. Oof. The original it. But I believe it's, how how scared they are and how young they are. Yeah, because cool, the younger you are, the more fearful mm, you are of things because yeah. it's the unknown. And, like, there is definitely some inconsistencies in the movie in terms of, like, logic. So Yeah, there's, there's definitely some horror movie logic that, mm, they, need, that they need to use uh, just to build tension, right, basically. Right, right. Uh, even if it's not included in the original material, there's even scenes. Well, there's yeah. He, uh, Stephen King did one scene for this, I believe. Oh yeah, and I actually like his cameo. I th- I thought it was. Uh, I don't I don't know if that was the one in particular. I know he wrote one scene, but I, I like one new scene for the this movie. It was the funhouse scene. Oh oh well yeah that makes sense because the kid is there yeah yeah. Uh, but yeah, Stephen King does do a cameo in this, and that was that was fun. He was great. There's <laughs> yeah. a lot of there's a lot of levity in this movie too. Yeah, only, a lot more than the like, first movie. Almost to the point where, and I I saw this uh, before, so I'm not going to take credit for the description, <laughs> but it's borders on like 
Sam Raimi Evil Dead type humor sometimes. Yeah, even the um, if people saw the preview of the movie that the one that takes place in the old woman's apartment. Yeah, yeah. When they show the creature, mm-hmm. yeah, I can understand what, now why they didn't show the creature. Right, that and even the um, the scene in the the Chinese restaurant. Yeah, that was all. Like I'm thinking. Sam this Ra- is like gross out here. Drag me to hell. Here. Yeah, exactly. would be a great companion um, film to this. And that's not to say like I didn't appreciate the humor, but if you're gonna like, I, there's so much of this movie that doesn't make sense when it's even compared to itself. So earlier I said it seems like the jump scares that they they use, and it's this movie is basically all jump scares. There's a couple of scenes where it does build good atmosphere, and I feel yeah. like genuinely oh if you had let this sit a little longer it would be genuinely terrifying um but they do these jump scares i feel in direct retaliation i guess uh to the the, critiques the of, critiques the, first of the first one where yeah. people are like well like i don't think that's a super scary movie i feel like that's more of a coming of age movie yeah than a, a, a but even then movie. that's not that's not a criticism of right the film. I, like i still like the first movie yeah i'm just saying like i'm not losing sleep you know over it yeah um but- and there, i would even say the comedic moments of the film uh that are supposed to like you know there's that tension that grip that the film has on you and it lets go a little bit for right. the levity but it does it sometimes at very inconvenient mm-hmm. times yeah there's the three doors scene yeah well and that's that was kind of a callback to the first one too. yeah but at the same time, and people have, uh, from what I've read in reviews, complained about them rehashing from the first movie. Yeah, but I'm like, yeah. they're going to remember that from the past experiences. Right, so, right. And a I- lot of this movie is about remembering. Yeah. Because the further, that's a whole plot. And that's the further it's a you very are, big plot. The point. further you are away from Derry, the less you remember to the point where when they all get called back as adults, they all have like violent reactions yeah. to remembering because they've just completely forgotten. Um, but what I was saying earlier is that they want these jump scares to be like this. See, now our movie is scary, yeah. but then they have these breaks in the horror for the levity. And I'm like, okay, well, do you want me to laugh here? Or do you want me to be scared? Yeah. So like, it's kind of like this mismatch. Inconsistent in tone. And I'm, I'm not like, I enjoyed the humor. Like it is a, it's very funny. Oh, Bill I, Hader deserves an Academy Yeah. He award. fucking carries the laughs in this. Yeah. Uh, Every but, single uh, every single scene that he's in that requires him to either be super comedic mm-hmm. or to either be super dramatic, yeah, he yeah. kills it. He is. Yeah, I think he's the all star. If well, I even well, I like Eddie in this. Yeah, as well. he's he's also that's who I was I was thinking of. He's he's great too. Who I didn't I didn't I was like I've seen him in something else that was a horror movie and it was the cop in Sinister. Oh shit! I would have never remembered that Ethan Hawke. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was. It's just yeah. Like, no, no. He's one I remember faces. the movie. I just I would have never remembered him as the cop from that movie. Yeah, and <laughs> it blew my mind. I was like, yeah. oh yeah, I remember that actually scary movie. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but I but thought yeah, he like I thought he had funnier moments than uh, Bill Hader. Yeah, there's sometime. some. Well, especially in the later half of the movie. Yeah. Uh, the scene, yeah, he fucking kills the, s- <laughs> the scene with in the him. Bathroom. Yeah, in the yeah, bathroom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like nobody would react yeah. that way. And he's like, <laughs> "Cut your mullet." <laughs> it's been like thirty years. I, I don't want to spoil the scene, yeah. but that was a great scene too. Yeah. Um, and having not re- read the original book or seen the miniseries, uh, what happens to Eddie? Of course. Okay, so th- it, there is a very large deviation from the just from the miniseries alone. Yeah, um, when it comes to him. To everyone. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, the the whole final scene is completely different. And some would say to the benefit, um, I think you could well, no, the the ending to the original miniseries was really shit. I won't I won't dance well, around that. It was definitely of the time. I think I know what you're referring to, and I like to call it and I know it came after, but the watchman effect when it comes to film adaptations of a, no. uh yeah that's fair in i think i can th- see where you're going with that they they tweak the ending mm. to make it a little bit more relevant and Palatable a little bit more digestible and, yeah whereas in the original miniseries uh it when it becomes its original form transforms into something um grotesque to say the least well, but it, it, like i actually silly i think the form he takes in in this at the end is uh, pretty close 
Yeah, so no, I'm, I'm saying they, they take yes, inspiration. It is, it is silly, yeah. But then they also twist it because they're like, but, you know, Pennywise is the face. But, so. but frankly, even the book has had criticisms of its ending, and I think that's like kind of the joke that keeps going on. Like They even Bill reference that. Bill can't the write film. endings. Yeah. yeah. So uh, It's very much uh, meta in, yeah. in a way. So, and I think your enjoyment of that is going to change based on you as a person very you know like there's something to be said of like oh haha it's a it's a reference because generally nobody likes the ending of it at all yeah uh but then like you can also make the criticism like well if you know going into it that that's a problem why wouldn't you try to fix it yeah and i actually i don't have any do you have criticisms yeah i can't even say the word do you have any criticisms of the ending to this adaptation uh, not in terms of like what they do with it, but I, I do feel it was a little long and dragged out. The the ending mm-hmm. had a very Lord of the Rings type ending, and if you know, do you well, know? I'm what not I mean even by thinking that? of that. I'm I, I'm just thinking of the final battle itself. Oh, okay. That that battle I felt really dragged for a little bit. Yeah. Um, and if it wasn't for some of the jokes in there, they're like, it's not even really the that not very scary s- door. It's not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's really not even that terrifying either it's more action oriented yeah yeah and okay, so let me let me let me just say overall when i was watching the movie i kept repeating in my head uh unconsciously uh this is two hours and 45 minutes this is two hours and 45 minutes um and i was wondering what the length was mm. and i started to feel it which made me more self-conscious of uh, how long the movie was taking yeah. there are and this isn't one of those movies like once upon a time in hollywood where and you should check out our episode of once upon a time in hollywood mm-hmm. uh it's up on podcast versus you know on youtube <laughs> uh just look for nicknames movies uh where you could take little bits and pieces of once upon a time in hollywood and cut it out and, and it, it would down. be mm-hmm. it would benefit from it this you could take this uh, is like more of a chunk thing. it's more of a big chunk like yeah. there's some exposition the ending post final battle mm. uh i was like okay come on dude i i need to get home i need to feed my cat like <laughs> well and like personally i feel like if i was going to cut something out that was actually fine for me oh because okay. that that's like wrapping it up wrapping up your character arc i feel like maybe the like there's that first scene with the water and then there's a scene after that where they're walking through town the f- and, uh, are you talking about with the gay couple at the carnival? The opening no, scene? No, 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 not that. Oh, okay. Like, with the ending. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, with where the they're ending, in swimming they, in the water. Yeah, anyway. there's that scene, and that's good. Yeah. And then there's the scene immediately after that where they're walking through town. Yeah. And, like, that is kind of, like, I feel like you might be able to trim some stuff down there, too. And then with the Ma following, yeah, maybe some work there. But I feel like there's other problem areas that i would trim down first yeah like frankly the whole quest out the hour-long quest that everybody goes on yeah is too much i felt like i don't want to get into uh into spoilers but i feel like we're dodging around them anyway after they visit the clubhouse from yeah. that yeah. all the way up until they get attacked by henry bowers mm-hmm. i think and i so i'm right there with yeah, you like yeah. trying to find the good chunk of it that we could get rid of but basically yeah the individual quests just for jump scares and some of some of the the ones are really good and then some of the ones like ben's uh quest is well, and then like i'm kind of mixed on that too so i feel like overall the setup for ben's like quest away from everyone else yeah was blah but it's like one of the only places where it's just pennywise yeah um everyone else gets like a monster they get a yeah different monster that mm. we kind of think it, it's kind of pennywise but it's also the a, a version that he's terrified of rejection from bev he, yeah the, the, yeah the hair yeah i mean he always serves a different purpose yeah whenever he shows he's, up he's kind of like the ben being a, a sexy ben by the way yes that, good casting who is that guy by the way uh, i've seen him in something he looks like he could Easily he, replaced. He looks like Josh do du- 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 Josh DeHamel. DeHamel, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Having problems with names today. Uh, let me look it up. It, I, is he the guy from Suits? No, that's... Uh, One of the guys from Suits. 
<laughs> he was from Top of the Lake, which uh, is actually a great... Uh, oh, okay. You don't care. Um, uh, I, that wasn't an I don't care fa- face. That <laughs> was like, a, uh, I, like, I don't know what that is. It's it's a Canadian Twin Peaks. Oh, yeah. okay. And it's got the chick from uh, Handmaiden. Oh, uh, Elizabeth Moss? Yes. She's the uh, detective in that. Yeah, you know what I think I know him from? What? Terra Nova. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's watched, only in three episodes. Uh, well, I think that show was only like six it was, episodes. It was one, no, yeah, it was one season, I think. Thirteen, yeah. yeah. Stephen Lang, Jason Amara, Naomi Scott. Huh. Uh, Terra Nova. That was, was it? a Spielberg uh, thing. He's, <laughs> hey, he produces a lot of shit. He does. Whenever like they don't put, whenever they put his name on something, uh, you have to be like, all right, all right. well, now is it good? You were there for one meeting. Did he? Put, I was <laughs> you, there for. <laughs> you signed a check somewhere. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, Family Saga. I did not know that was a genre. Yeah. Sci-fi. I think that's like a, we have to band together. Yeah. In this, <laughs> did you ever watch Terranova? No, I didn't. There's I'm not that. into most sci-fi shows. The yeah. only one that. I ever got into? It was a. Let's see. I tried the Expanse, but I I hear it's really really good that's now. That's I heard. But I I need to start over. Terra Nova, if I'm remembering cor- correctly, and I believe I am, is like, uh, everybody lives in a compound. Okay. And there's dinosaurs outside. Okay, that's <laughs> every every sci-fi show is always like, and there's dinosaurs outside. Because uh, I know there was. Uh, I almost said Bridge to Terabithia. No, the the other one. <laughs> oh yes, the dinosaur movie Bridge to Terabithia. <laughs> no, the the one with <laughs> the, uh, Tabula Rasa. They made a show called Tabula Rasa. It's like yeah, that, but dinosaurs. Sounds vaguely familiar, but mm-hmm. I don't remember it. Um, it Chapter Two. So uh, you, we don't have to rate it, but would you recommend people who enjoyed the first film go see it? Well, I am a creature of. Gross. Uh, What's the word? Like, I don't want to say finishing because that sounds bad. <laughs> uh, but I need to finish things, you know. Yeah, so, you need that completion. Like I I'm the same would, way. I if if you're like me, where you need that completion to the story, then yes, I would go see it. Um, that's not to say that I think that's its only value. Like I said, it's a very funny movie. Um, it's and, but it's not like straight comedy the whole way through. No, no. Well, I don't know. It's it it gets pretty close. Like there's there are a lot of jump scares, so you'll you'll jump yeah. because oh, loud music and sudden thing in my in my vision here. That's it's just human to react. Yeah. Um, but there is very few instances where I'm like, this shit's scary. Uh, less so than the first one, even which, like. That was my big criticism for the first one. So yeah. now that it seems even worse than this one, that like my takeaway is more focused on the comedy. That's and unfortunate. So like, and I, I like I, it sounds like I'm being really down on the movie, and maybe I am. I don't know. Um, I did enjoy it, but I don't feel like it was for the reason it should have been. Okay, you know. But I think you're yeah, you're also a fan of Sam Raimi s type stuff, right? I am, but I don't think. We needed that here. No, no, because it it's is that's supposed not what it's known to be for. horror. And granted, like a lot of Stephen King stuff does kind of lean a little to the campy side. Um, I mentioned Pet Cemetery earlier. That 1989 version of the movie is pretty campy. Yeah. However, there are still legit scenes of terror in that movie. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you ever saw the original. It's been a long time. Like I said, the 2019 one is in my queue. Uh, yeah. I heard mixed things about it. So. Um, the, the biggest draw for it is that they switch up the kids, the yeah, kids. instead of that, a son, it's a daughter. Big, that's really the biggest thing. Okay. I think they do an overall, it, it's, it's fine. Okay. Um, I, I like think, that. I think the pros are more in the 1989 column. Okay. Just in terms of like tension building and, uh, like general vibe, but like on the flip side, the Lewis, who's the main character, Jason Clark, in, in the nineteen. Well, he's in the twenty nineteen one. Yeah, sorry. In the nineteen eighty nine one, he is not acted very well. Um, it huh. is very campy. Okay. Um, whereas the trade off for that, like Jason Clark, is good in the twenty nineteen one, but he's just kind of like an everyman. 
type thing. I mean, he's like good for Jason Clark. I was, yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> let's like, talk about Jason Clark for a second. He he's... does, he does the acting. <laughs> you know, he played John Connor. Right? I'm aware. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to talk about but it. But to be fair, that Just, was really part of, like part of that problem was the script anyway. I don't like Jason Clark. I think he's an okay and it's because I think he's an okay actor. I think he he doesn't have the face uh to combine with the other group of everyman forgettable actors, but like right. Sam Worthington. Yeah, when you yeah, like when you see Jason Clark, you're, you're like, like oh, that's okay. Jason Clark. Yeah. I I actually confuse Jason Clark with the guy from The Americans uh who doesn't look anything like him from your reaction the, the one with the like chiseled jaw oh, i'm sorry i didn't realize he uh jason clark didn't have a chiseled jaw well it's defined but like that guy if i'm thinking of a guy he has a very like compact face matthew reese P- pull up a picture hold on I'll, I'll do i can't do a side by side but yeah just pull it oh yeah okay he looks that, a lot more uh, rugged and handsome in that picture that's, that's not, not who i was thinking of actually so i don't know who I was does he kind of look like jason Clark no, in a way? No. all right fuck you <laughs> all right well, anyway what i was saying was like you get the trade-off of like you know not as campy acting from the main character in the 2019 version but as much as i love john lithgow i feel like you're missing a lot from uh, Fred Gwynn's portrayal of Judd in the yeah. 1989 one, where he has this really thick main accent, yeah. and like the that's where I that's what I always think of when I think of sometimes dead is better, and that's oh, not, oh okay, and that uh, was like weirdly Australian, or yeah, it was, like but you know, uh, you know, definitely wasn't Maine, <laughs> but like that's what I I think of Fred Gwynn when I think of that line, yeah, and John Lithgow's like I wasn't even really I didn't even really catch it when he said it. I had to, it was like 15 minutes after the fact, and I turned to Casey, and I'm like, I wonder if they're going to say that line. And she goes, he, he did say it. Yeah. It was like, oh, I guess it was, it was just a part of the conversation. Yeah. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. But I'll, I'll still check it out. But, yeah. like, and I think uh, Zelda, the sister in the 2019 version, see, this is, it's kind of hard to, like. Because I have no for, frame yeah, of reference. Yeah, you have no frame of reference. Yeah. There's the lewis's wife has a sister named zelda da, 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 da. <laughs> not that one yeah definitely not that one you're waiting for me to do that i was <laughs> um but like she is one of the scariest parts of the 1989 movie and okay. the book like i had nightmares from zelda uh in the book da, da, uh, da, da, da. for like years yeah after i read that shit um, and they don't really do it justice, I feel like, in the 2019 version. So you feel like it's they didn't make it scary enough and they didn't make it campy enough to make it kind of stand well, out? Well, I, I just think there like, are certain trade-offs. Like, there are pros for one and there's pros for the other. Um, the t- there's still tension in, in this 2019 version. Yeah. I, I feel like that's, like, a good... Like, that, that, that that's there, at least, which is something I can't say the same for, for it, Chapter 2. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they at least got that. Like, it still serves its purpose as, like, a horror movie centrally. Really, there's... And depending on how you look at it, this could be a negative. But really, there's no comedy in the 2019 Pet Cemetery. There's one throw throwaway line that really got me that's really fucking funny. Was it supposed to be funny? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's very much played for laughs. But that's pretty much it. Everything else is very heavy and very tense. Um, but, again, that's kind of what I'm there for. You know, I'm not... I wasn't going into it chapter two thinking I'm gonna get a Marvel movie, if that makes any sense. Yeah, but I did get a, a Marvel movie. So. Oh yeah, I was I was gonna I was like trying to think of the name of it, but uh, I did not know that was. Oh okay, all right. What, what are you looking at? I'm looking up adaptations of Stephen King stuff and like the upcoming ones. Yeah, yeah, Doctor Sleep. You've got Doctor Sleep They're with. Due- uh, uh, Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor. And that actually, I haven't read the book, but yeah, it looks either. interesting. It's yeah. directed by the guy who did uh, Haunting of Hill House, and he's yes. actually mm-hmm. he actually did Gerald's Game, yep. and hold on, let me look that up, actually. Hold on. He's done quite a few Stephen King stuff. He kind of took over Frank Darabont's yeah. role yeah. as the Stephen <laughs> King ad- uh, adapter, but he did Haunting of Hill House, Gerald's Game. Uh, he did uh, Ouija 2, Origin of Evil. 
uh, Oculus, which the, these got good reviews. Yeah, so. Oculus and uh, Ouija 2 are actually pretty good. I hated them. But that's, really? I hated the kid actors in it. And that's so. fair, yeah. That's amazing. I, I know I'm in the minority on those. Um, I could have sworn he did the other... Did you like Haunting a Hill House? I did, yeah. You know, one of the kids... Was it one of the kids who was in yeah. uh, uh, Ouija? Yeah, I think so. In but that? still, I, I overall, I didn't like the, char- gotcha. the kid actors. <laughs> but, you know, there's good acting in Haunting of Hill House and good direction. It's, it's the same guy, though. I know. <laughs> I know. People could be inconsistent. <laughs> We're inconsistent every week. Anyway. Uh, but he's done a lot. He, he's it, It's horror. That's all he does. Yeah, it's horror yeah. stuff. But he's really good at it. Doctor Sleep looks really good. They, I believe, yeah, it does look good. Uh, I believe they're also doing an adaptation, uh, like a new adaptation of Salem's Lot. Yeah, Salem's Lot. Uh, Which that the uh, old Salem's Lot and with Rudger Hauer, yeah, and the original It miniseries, those terrorized me for years. Yeah, because you got the image of oh, spoiler Rugger Hauer as a vampire. Yeah, and it's the Nosferatu vampire. It's uh-huh. very creepy with the buck teeth. There's it's a, actually the thumbnail. Specifically, there's a scene the, in that this video. <laughs> there's a scene in that where uh, someone is tossed out a window. Yeah. and lands on one of those spiked fences. Yeah, that fucked me up, man. Yeah, it's I scary was like stuff. Five when I saw that. No one shit. likes. <laughs> no one likes people getting impaled. Yeah. That's a scary thing. Vlad was famous for it. <laughs> Dra- Dracula. I got it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and then there, he, he's there's like six other adaptations. They're uh, adapting the Long Walk, which I thought oh, you'd be interested interesting, in. Yeah. Which is battle royale, but uh-huh. instead of killing each other in a field, it's like people just walking. Yeah. <laughs> and it's long. And it's long. It's a long walk. It's like uh if For- Forrest Gump would probably win every year. But yes. uh well he was running, so I mean, but if he walked he'd have even more endurance. Is that cheating though? Running? I don't know. I didn't read the story. <laughs> I was running. So, <laughs> uh in the tall grass, uh directed by the guy who directed uh the the Cube and Splice, Vincenzo uh, Vitale, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for Netflix. And Splice, that was a weird movie. It was a terrible movie. <laughs> Rewatch Splice for I me. I don't know if I want to. Yeah, uh, that's bad. Uh, Cube is good. All I all I remember taking away from it was after it was over. I was like, that was a weird movie. Yeah. For Adrian Brody had sex with that thing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, 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 alien mute, not alien, but a mutation of like his wife and. <laughs> Like Talk. a lizard or something. Yeah. I don't remember. Uh, they're doing the stand uh, for CBS. Yeah, that's, that's been in development forever. Yeah. I feel like Lizzie's story, which uh, one of his romance books, like yeah, that. He wrote that under Richard Bachman, didn't he? No, it was under Stephen King. Was it? Yeah. See. Oh, yep. And then uh, the Outsider, which is a more recent book that I think came out last year. Yeah. So, I mean, they're adapting all of this. Stuff. And Dark Towers becoming a series as well. Are they actually doing that, though? Yeah. I thought they shelved that after the first one got so after the, No, not, it, not a film series. Oh, a TV yeah, they're series. Doing the, ah, I forgot about that. They are doing the TV series. Because yeah. Michael Rooker got yeah. uh, cast a couple That'll months be, ago. I'm, I'm, I'll be interested to see how that goes. Because it, it would do better as a TV series mm, than a movie. It would. No, no uh, uh, disrespect to Idris Elba, but... Yeah, no, that I, was Matthew McConaughey's fault and the direction of the film, because he camped it up and the director was totally fine with it. <laughs> I, I, let me look that up. Actually, I want to look up the director of that because I remember thinking, "Oh no, you know who it was? Get, get, guess who it was? Uh, I'm not gonna guess. Ron Howard. Was it? Yeah. Or was he the primary, or did he just come on for for reshoots? Oh uh, no, it was Nicolas Arcel. Ron Howard produced it, but like his name was all over it. Yeah. But still, it was a bad movie. I, I didn't see it. It's it's bad. It like they tried to adapt. It was like a well, it was like a faux sequel, but it was, it was they really tried weird. to adapt uh, the Gunslinger, which is the first the book first of the Dark one. Tower series. Yeah. But then they also took bits and pieces from some of the other books right. of the series and tried to stuff them in there because they're like, oh, we need to make sure it's franchisable. Right, if that's a word. It is. <laughs> oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> I just, I no, was, I'll take I was it. Gonna let you I'll it. take it. Um, so we're running out of time, but let me let me just take uh, a moment to like ask you: Do you have a favorite 
like villain or monster of Stephen King? Well, I I do really like Pet Cemetery, but like one of the things with that movie or a story really is that there's not like actually a central antagonist because everything kind of stems from choices. Yeah. Um, like you could say the people that come back are the antagonists, but really those that that's not until the end of the the movie or the book. Or it's the people that purposely buried them well that's what i'm saying oh right? okay yeah like it's it's like it's there's no evil person it's like a perspective it's thing. it's like you made some really bad choices <laughs> yeah yeah um that's the thing about stephen king's uh stories just overall is like there's monsters and villains and stuff but like when you think about it if you like look at the main characters that are like right, supposed to be right. good people they make shitty choices too um are you just, you're talking just about movies, right? I just well, I just mean in general. <laughs> like, oh, no, I, I uh, sorry. You when you're asking the question, what's my favorite villain? You're just yeah, I guess movie. from adapted works into TV because I think uh, they film. technically did an adaptation of the Dark Half, but I've yes, never they seen it. You haven't? No. Oh, it's campy as hell. But it's a great book. Yeah. Um, for for those who are unaware, that's uh, a, a author writes a series like a, a book series, and the villain in it. Comes to, comes to life, life. yeah um, and it's like an evil version of himself him. because yeah. he put himself in his own book right um technically if i want to cheat i can just say the man in black and it talks that's referencing like yeah 30 randall flag stuff. yeah yeah he's the villain in <laughs> the like 90 percent of like, his stuff technically it's the same guy in the stand the dark tower uh i'm pretty sure it's pennywise like that's the that's part of the multi-dimensional being because he has different states and he's always like flowing through time. It's I, fucking weird. I think I remember reading again. This is in like a wiki or something, but like he's it, it's separate because it? yeah, it is an alien, whereas yeah, the multi, man in black is multi-dimensional an alien. entity of evil yeah. from a different dimension. <sighs> yeah, I'm sorry, Stephen <laughs> King. You know, <Yeah. laughs> just try to read any of the Dark Tower, and it's like, wh- what are you talking about? Or, or uh, uh, the other fantasy book. I think it's Eyes of the Dragon or something. But like one of his first. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was uh, what was the the dad? Technically, there was something to do with it in The Shining, wasn't there? How do you mean? Like the same kind of cosmic entity that feeds off. I don't know. You mean like Pennywise or what? It's yeah, Stephen know. King, man. You just the, gotta... Shining's, the Shining's great. But... Oh, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> um. I'm really looking. I actually, I'm looking forward to Doctor Sleep just because you and McGregor. I like his. Uh, I will say the, the his acting. Mo- that movie is going to be a little weird because it's going to be directly referencing the Stanley Kubrick movie. Yeah, which is drastically different from, from the, the original Shining yeah. to the point where characters who die in the Stanley Kubrick movie were still alive at the end of the original Shining and are referenced in Doctor Sleep. So I well I think yeah they're gonna twist the Doctor Sleep film to fit the Stanley yeah. Kubrick film so it's more of a sequel to the film mm-hmm. than it is the book yeah which again is still very weird because The Shining came out fucking forever ago and so people are gonna have to watch a really old an older film you know to watch this new one or they're not gonna watch it at all and they're gonna be like what are you talking about right so well, I uh, I think I gave my perspective pretty obviously how do you feel about it chapter two would you give it your recommendation oh yeah i mean i I would give it my recommendation for casual horror fans uh i was i was surrounded on my left by an older woman who i'm pretty sure fell asleep i don't know how i would have rather had that from my experience uh (laughs) oh uh or and like a, a teenage uh girl i think she was there with her boyfriend or whatever i didn't bother um but my, my theater was jam packed. Uh, again, it was Friday. Yeah. Um, but it was early in the morning, and you know school started, so it, was, it seemed like it was a popular time, uh, and got good responses. So, did you have a bad experience? Oh, I had an awful experience. Tell me about it. Yeah, I guess I didn't tell you this yet. Um, well, we thought ten thirty on a Saturday, probably not that crowded, yeah. and uh, shouldn't really run into any issues wrong on both counts because we get there and the entire theater is full and of course i have casey gets lucky she has an empty seat next to her nice and the best uh couple 
that's like two seats over that are not making any noise. Yeah. I, of course, get someone who sits directly next to me, and he ended up being okay. But the two girls that were sitting next to him, I'm pretty sure were underage and didn't shut the fuck up the entire time. And that's not even counting the other group of teenagers who are like up and back, like yeah, a row like or a two. Row, yeah. Who literally talk through the entire thing. Like full volume? Yeah. Yeah. And like trying to be funny and cracking jokes through that. And it's like, I do. Well, and like, I got enough. Like, I'm getting enough humor from Bill Hader, and he's yeah. actually fucking funny. I yeah. don't need some fucking 16 year old kid who snuck into a movie to try Doesn't to Doesn't even get know who Job the Hutt yeah. is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so that was annoying. But then a fight broke out in the middle of our show. Fuck yeah. I guess some guy down in front was kept using his phone. And this is like, I didn't catch everything. This is just like piecing together. Yeah. Because right? yeah. after it happened, I'm like, what? I have to know. I have to like do some sleuthing here. Um, guy in the front had his, kept taking out his phone. Woman with, I guess, her family. She kept saying, "My, I'm here with my family." And that just makes me think you have a five year old sitting yeah. next to you in the movie what, theater. What the hell? Uh, and they're getting into a fight, and they're like, "You want to take this outside? Let's take this outside." And the, like, eventually they leave, and like two minutes later, lights come up. There, people who work at the theater, yeah, are are coming in and they're like looking around for them, and then everybody's getting pissed off because it's like the movie's still playing. Yeah, they didn't. And stop the lights it. still on. Yeah, or the lights are on now, and then the one of the people who from the theater that came in, um, is trying to tell us something over the movie. They don't like stop the movie to yeah. say it. So she says something. And I can only catch, like, we're going to rewind. We're going to stop it and rewind it. Yeah. But I can't really. Because, like, it was the scene where Ben's getting chased by uh, foe Be- uh, Beverly. In the, the, the school In scene. In the school. Yeah. yeah. And that's fucking loud. So we didn't get any of that. Um, they proceed to continue to walk through the theater for, like, five minutes. Uh-huh. And then when they rewind it. They rewind it 20 or 30 minutes back. So that's why you said it was a three hour movie. Yeah. Instead of. <laughs> um, wow. When the whole altercation started like five minutes prior. Yeah. So we ended up having to watch the end of Bill Hader's quest scene. Yeah. And all of Bill's again, where he goes into you the got bike a shop. Great bathroom break in there if you want. And it. that's what most people did. They went to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. It was replaying. Um, so thankfully, I got a voucher, or my wife and I got a, two vouchers from nice. it. Nice. Okay. Uh, so that's at least something, but that might have something to do with why I was so negative on that middle part because I had to watch it again. Oh, and, okay. And this is good context. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so and like that's not really fair to the movie. I feel like my critic, like I would still stand by that criticism because yeah. I was feeling it already the first time through. And then when it when we had to restart that far back, I was like, "Oh man, yeah, well, it's already a again. two hour and yeah. forty five minute long." Yeah, it's that's ridiculous. I'm sorry. Was it the theater by your place? No, no, it was the one over here because we had a Fandango card, and this is the only place we which, can use which it. Which theater? Rave. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Oh, it is. It's a shit theater. <laughs> it's it's just, old. It's old. It's an older. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's been in, next to that mall for forever. But, yeah. So. Yeah. Just just you know, that's ca- crazy. Casual fight in the middle of a three hour movie. <laughs> Actually, I didn't see it at rave. I saw it at the uh, Alliance Town Center one. Oh, the Cinemark uh, one. Yeah. Off thirty five. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and so I saw it Friday morning at mm. one in a shopping center in the yeah. middle of a nice, quaint neighborhood. Well, and that's like I'm sitting over here like this is fucking like some quiet ass like town where basically it's just supposed to be all old people yeah and it's ten thirty on a fucking saturday yeah and i'm about to witness like people throw down yeah because some dude won't put his fucking phone oh and that was the other thing the the two parties are arguing yeah. right and they're 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 getting progressively louder because they have to match the volume of the movie <laughs> And they're like, I can't get my point across to you that I'm pissed off at you so over, leave. like, the soundtrack of It. Yeah. 
the fucking teenagers who have been talking throughout that entire thing then start shouting for them to shut up. Yeah. I'm like, well, if this isn't just ironic, I don't know what it is. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you stuck it's, through it, it and actually finished it. Well, I wasn't going to fucking leave. I paid for the damn thing. Yeah, but and I mean, you ended be, up. I, like, I actually, I did want to see it. Yeah. It's just... it's the, when it, whenever it's a movie that you want to see, especially, yeah. that's what makes it worse. Yeah. Well, I will say the guy who was sitting next to me kept taking out his phone, too. Asshole. Yeah. What is the point? I don't know. Like I turn like I turn off my phone anytime I see somebody who's like oh I don't mind you know turning down the volume or whatever no because your phone can still pull off yeah it's the, the light screen. that's the problem it's the really. light it's like that's the most distracting thing uh, you can see in a dark room yeah um so that was my Saturday <laughs> well, I'm sorry I, next, we next time we go I'll be the one who I th- I'll be the one who 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 stops that fight yeah we we'll just... uh we didn't get out of the theater till. Two o'clock, and our showing was at ten thirty. Yeah, I was the same, but it, yeah. that was how long the movie took, anyway, for me. About, hmm. I think. It was well, like, did you stay through the whole credits? No, oh. I left about like a minute through the credits. Or no, I think we got out at two thirty. Yeah. That would make sense because yeah. I had to leave immediately. We were going to do this at three. And I had enough time to get home and then immediately turn around and come oh, back. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. so this is all fresh in your mind, yeah. too. Yeah. Oh, man. What a whirlwind of a day. Yeah. I'm sorry, man. Uh, good times. Good times. What would you uh, recommend for people to watch uh, in lieu of all the Stephen King stuff that we talked about? Oh, um, hmm. I- I'll give you my recommendation. Yeah, please do. One out of left field. I don't know if okay. you've ever seen it. Yeah, uh, I don't actually- know what's going on in right field, but now I want to know what's what's over over in the here, left field. over here yeah. in left field yeah. with all the left-handed people. Uh, people can be right-handed in the left field. <laughs> <laughs> it's deviate up by people who use the left hand and the right hand. Um, I actually heard of this Stephen King work uh, through Half Price Books. I went there. Uh, Are you for recommending those that a book? It was a screenplay, oh. actually a teleplay, to be sure. Technical uh, of a miniseries that not a lot of people watched because uh, I don't know. I don't know. Mm, sure, uh, yeah. Called Storm of the Century. Interesting. Did you ever watch it? Or? I didn't, know. So when I read it, I was like, oh, this is really interesting. And then I watched it. I was like, this is uh, mid-90s, so they're, pe- they're still trying to figure out yeah, what they're doing yeah. with cinema and where it's going, HD and all that stuff. Um, it's basically about a quaint nor'eastern uh, town in Maine, of course, uh, that's kind of right by the ocean. Mm. It's very, it's like fishing village type of town. And then a hurricane hits okay. and it gets worse and worse and worse. And basically everybody uh, gets together. It's kind of a combination of The Mist and some of his other works. But basically the cause of everything is a uh, like 10,000 year old wizard with uh, a chip on his shoulder. Gotcha. And he goes around murdering people and stealing children. Oh, it's, as you do. As you do, as wizards yeah. do. Um, and so it's actually really interesting, uh, very dark and very kind of different from, well, not very different from other Stephen King stuff, but I love a good supernatural tale yeah, and it yeah. had a good twist. And I love, you know, uh, I think it's like a sub, sub, sub genre of film, but uh, horror films where all of the characters are in one location and they have to try to find a way to survive or get out. The mist is yeah. is one of those. Yeah, uh, you mentioned it the first time. It's funny. You won't believe me, but as you were going through yours, I was thinking like, oh, maybe I should do the mist. <laughs> do the mist, like watch it or no, recommend no, it? like recommend it. Oh uh, yeah, but I mean, uh, I recommend Storm of the Century. It's going to be kind of hard to find, uh, just because again, it was a mini series. Yeah. Uh, like, hold on, let me actually look that up when that was, because I want to say mid nineties, because it had some mid nineties actors in it, but. It came out 1999. I'm pretty sure that's the same year, actually. It was Hearts of, Hearts of Atlantis. Yeah. yeah. It was a, it was yeah, another renaissance Atlantis. of Stephen yeah. King stuff. But, uh, yeah, it had Timothy Daly, uh, Colm Fiore, and Jeffrey Dumont. And I'm pretty sure it had What's Her Name from... Yeah, see, he's in, like, yeah, he every Stephen in, King thing. He is in a lot of them, yeah. Uh, he was also in The Walking Dead. Anyway, uh, Storm of the Century, I recommend. It's it's telling me that it's three episodes and it's 
256 minutes. <laughs> so, a <laughs> little bit of a long one. Yeah. Uh, so that's one of those works of Stephen King's that not a lot of people talk about, yeah. but I recommend. Um, yeah, you're you're pretty good with going. Oh, you know, cl- classic. <laughs> you look at you, you little <laughs> scamp. Ah. Um, you know, you can't go wrong with Cujo, Carrie, yeah, Christine. Um, any of the early stuff. Misery? Fuck. Misery's really yeah. good. Yeah, Annie Wilkes. Uh, won um, her an Academy Award. Yeah, with uh, James Caan. Yeah. Is the, is the main character in that. Um, and yeah, I will put a signature on The Mist if you're okay with the, the ending? crippling, crippling depression. <laughs> After seeing the ending? Yeah. 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 I, uh, I told... So, uh, it, I was, I was telling Casey about it and I was like, I don't know if I want to tell you the ending. And she's like, no, no, go ahead and tell me. Cause she doesn't really care about spoilers. Oh uh, so I tell her and she's like, Oh God, I wish you hadn't told me that. And, I, <laughs> and I'm like, wait, you wish you hadn't, I hadn't told you that because now you feel like you would have appreciated that ending or just in general, you wish I hadn't told you that. She's like, I just generally yeah. don't wish you had told me that because now I'm super fucking sad. Yeah, because it's <laughs> such a such a why. And the movie, uh, from what I remember, the movie ending is vastly d- different. Vastly different from the short from story. The, the short story, yeah. uh, the char- the main character, the father, uh, has been writing a diary, and the, at the yeah. end, he basically just leaves the whole diary in a restaurant, and then gotcha. they drive away. Yeah, so, like, I want to say, just for the sake of being morbidly curious. Yeah. You, like, I feel like people have to know. You have to know. Like, this is legitimately one of the most depressing things I've seen. Uh, with the mist? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's a it's a decent it horror a, movie overall. It's a decent movie, CGI too. is a bit dated, but... Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember seeing it in theaters, and I was like, "Oh, oh like, god!" It, it's it's enjoyable. It's an enjoyable watch. Um, it's just that that ending is what if you've seen the the movie, that's the talking point. Is oh that yeah, ending. oh yeah. But that's again Frank Darabont. He did that in yeah. Green Mile mm-hmm. and a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah, uh, Green Mile. That's good. Shawshank. You can't go wrong. With Shawshank. Fuck. Yeah. There's, There's a so lot many. of good Stephen King There's stuff so out there. Yeah. But, uh, all the ones that you know, if you look up Stephen King stuff and they recommend it, it's probably one of the good ones. Yeah. 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 Um. But, you know, that's been our show. That's been uh, the Stephen King com- Comedy Hour yeah. thing. Uh, S-K-C-H. 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 <laughs> uh, this has been Nicknames and Movies, where the cinema love never stops. Please make sure you stop by our Patreon at patreon.com slash nicknames movies. Uh, we got one more episode. Yeah, boy. Before we kind of rebrand ourselves. Do After some 20 episodes. Yes. I do plan on doing. Uh, I know it's extra work for me, That's but fine. plan on I'm doing. I'm okay with that. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, plan on editing a little of a, a greatest hits kind of. Yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. Uh, MP3, just in case people want to download that and kind of show people and uh, get excited for the new version of our show. Is it is it too early to tell people what? they should be expecting or um no i do you want to do that next episode yeah maybe next episode. okay episode. we'll do it with the final um, episode i will say not to tantalize you listeners Ooh, titillate. Uh, nick, titillate me. nick sent me something that he made especially himself for this new show oh yeah um do you want to play the it? other night and fuck it's good I, okay guys, i thought you were pulling no 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 i'm legit serious right. it's fucking good no no don't do it now oh, okay no it, let, let, let it stew let it stew yeah. and titillate but dear listeners i promise you it's worth the wait it's it's not that exciting no it's good it's okay you, sh- you should be proud it is a bit catchy i'm not gonna lie i got it stuck in my head while i was doing laundry <laughs> earlier today i was like <laughs> i couldn't dance because there was like 80 80 year olds <laughs> Oh, God, that's exactly. a lot of 80 year olds. <laughs> yeah, it was very packed. Well, why? At the There's so many 80 year olds here. Uh, you, old neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. No, no, there's no <laughs> collegiates in my neighborhood next to a college. If you're ironically. below the age of 60, they just don't let you in. I know. I, I'm honestly surprised I got in. Yeah. Um, but thanks so much for listening, guys. Uh, we will see you next week for the final episode of Nick Payne's Movies. Uh, but don't be sad. We're some, new around some the corner. New right around the corner. Uh, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.